Hello, my name is Ana Razula and I am an abstract artist uh, based in Colombia, South America. And this is the 13th of February of 2024, one day before Valentine's Day. And well, I want to tell you a little bit about me. I've painted my whole life since I was a little kid and, and I've always been very much engaged into art. Actually, my grandmother was also an artist. She was a painter. Um, and, and that had a lot of influence in, in what I do. However, uh, as things in life happen, I didn't go to art school. I went to a law school instead, and, and I started a professional career as a corporate lawyer. And the, I believe this background and, and, of course, my personal history uh, gives me a broader look of the world uh, and, and, of course, of art. I believe that some of us, some people, came to this world to experiment different lives and have these different career paths. And, and I'm, I firmly, firmly believe that one thing doesn't deny the other. It might sound like a contradiction, but doing different activities kind of nourish um, all these different activities. Uh, and of course, there was a time when I was younger in which I very much regretted uh, not being brave enough to fight my parents and, and, and pursue an art degree and to have a career in art since the very beginning. Uh, but now I definitely understand um, it was a path I needed to follow in order to create freely. And, and it's funny because I actually enjoyed uh, being a lawyer and feeling smart and going to meetings and engaging in these hard conversations and then created, creating businesses and, and everything. Um, and just having this life full of others and, and full of social contact and sort of combining um, this part of my life with my artistic life, which is a bit, uh, which is more lonely, uh, is more about having an inner world rather than, than, uh, uh, than solving other people's problems. And it's more about being with myself in my own terms. So I've studied art my whole life. Uh, been taking courses and classes just freely. Um, I'm in, I believe not having a formal art background gives me this sense of freedom to create um, and, and also a sense of freedom when I show my work to the world where I have learned not to take criticism that seriously. Uh, it doesn't hurt that much when, when someone criticizes me. And I just, be, I just keep creating. I just think this is the plan of my soul. And being the plan of my soul, there is a little that I can do to change uh, that path. And precisely uh, this conception of, of what my soul has to say to the world is what has influenced my work during the years and, and still does. Um, so what I do as a painter, I just put all my effort, all my dedication, all my discipline and, and let my soul express itself. I'm just bringing to physical reality whatever my soul in its ethereal, magical uh, world full of wisdom wants to say to the world. And, and I believe this is what most artists uh, do at the end of the day. And of course, um, well, there's the blues, which are a big influence for me. Um, the sea and the sky and this idea of heaven, the idea of the ethereal realm, the spiritual journey. All of these narratives are very frequent in, in my paintings. Uh, and of course, there's no surprise because I was born and raised in the sea. Uh, I'm from the Caribbean. I live next to the ocean. And, and I walk on the beach every morning, so there's a lot of me in my art, and, 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 and these subjects are very present. And, well, as I said before, uh, one of my biggest influences is, of course, my grandmother. Uh, 
she was an exceptional woman born ahead of her time and, and of course so many artists I remember when I started painting when I was a, a, a kid a teenager and I had this fascination with cubism and the works of Cezanne, Brack, Picasso, Paul Klee, and then it was abstract art. And I got a bit crazy with, with Hilma Afklin's work and her idea uh, of this spiritual conception and these really big paintings uh, really got me. Uh, and pretty much this is the concept uh, I want to explore in my work. And of course now in this very connected world. I have my um, virtual teachers, these, a lot of influences, influencers and artists that I follow and that really enrich my, my artistic and my creative journey. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, so I believe it's like influence everywhere. At the end, uh, life itself and, and everything we go through is, is our biggest influence to create art. So in recent years, and, and precisely after COVID, um, I started engaging in using art as a therapy. Uh, last year, I got a specialization degree in, in something called transpersonal therapy with art. It's not art therapy, it's, it's a bit different. And, and since then, I am focusing on making more conscious art. Uh, always trying to include meditation in my practice, um, doing workshops, I'm, I'm doing um, therapy with art sessions and, and just using this amazing mechanism that, that is art uh, to help ourselves in, in our journey. I do work a lot on commissions and what I am doing now is creating a piece of art along with the collector and, and trying to involve in, in the creative process the, the collector or the client's intentions, their dreams, their desires, and trying to put all that on the canvas so they don't buy just a pretty artwork to decorate the, their living room rather than something special that resonates with them and, and with their soul. And since I became a mother, I've also been working on this integration of the child and the adult in the art making process, in the creative process, um, healing my inner child and, and working recently on a series of paintings, uh, inspiring cubism uh, that I relate to, to my early works and, and, and these forms that I, I started doing when, when I was a kid. I think the biggest challenge of being an artist is dealing with this sensibility uh, and, and, well, for me, in my experience, and I know that a lot of artists are, are feeling the same, and, and kind of achieving a balance between being free and wild, but also conscious and disciplined. I always say that the creative process needs both uh, the child that is free, naive, that is uh, that wants to create and to explore, but also needs this adult which has discipline, which brings some order to the table and and, and that brings, I mean, uh, a sense, yeah, of course, a sense of order uh, that is necessary. And and yeah, that, that's my case. I, I believe uh, we artists are these sensible individuals with this aim or this necessity to express ourselves because we have this complex, broad, chaotic, rich inner world and that something is not, sometimes it's not that easy to organize or, or to bring to, to physical reality in terms of actual work that, that sells. I mean, it's not that easy. And, and of course, I will say to my younger self, I definitely tell her to enjoy herself more, to care less for other, others' opinions, and to embrace her sensibility as a gift and not as a punishment of, of faith. Um, and unconventional 
mediums in my work, well, you name it, I, I believe uh, in things having a second life. So basically, uh, any element, I mean, everything is worth of becoming art. And then for a while, uh, I work a lot with uh, sheets, with bed sheets covered in plaster. That was a lot of fun. And I've tried a lot of things, uh, mostly recycled uh, objects. I have to say I love collage and I do it for fun. Sometimes I don't even show these crazy collage collages I make. I keep them for me as they might be a little bit personal. And they include, I mean, everything, old books, uh, pieces of paper, letters I write to myself. Uh, now I put on my kids, my kid, my, my kid drawings, feathers I find, funny objects I find at the beach. I just love collage and this integration of random things to make art. While I work in my art, I try to make it a sacred space, a sacred space, uh, something like a ritual. So normally uh, we'll start with some soft instrumental music and it may vary to total silence or to classical music or sometimes to something very commercial. It, it depends on the mood or, and, and, and what I'm creating at the moment. And then sometimes I paint with my two-year-old and there you have a different background noise, which I'm sure changes the mood of the painting. And that's fun. And then best reaction to my work? Oh, well, recently a couple of collectors told me they found peace in, in my works. And that was just sublime for me. I mean, what a, what a nice comment. Uh, these kinds of feelings is what I want what I want people to take away from my artwork, this feeling or this sensation of being loved by something higher, this conviction that there is something else, something more magical, ethereal, you name it as you want, universe, higher self, God, whatever force that, that you believe that, that is connecting us as humans and, and this is nothing different than the force of universal love.